friend of mine. I live in a little town in Italy now since 1988, and I refuse to write about my town or even name it. It's in my book, Among 500 Cities, but you won't know which one it is. And I intentionally do that because I saw what that can do. And my town is smaller than Cortona. And people in the town have looked at me with fear. As I, they say, ma tu sei americano, e puoi scrivere tutto di noi. You can say anything you want about us as an American. I always say, I will not. And the town had an earthquake in 1997. And I, as an American, we have a very sort of volunteerism sense, went out and started helping people clean up their shops. And they thought at first that I was concerned because my dry cleaning was in one place. <laughs> Something was in a, that was not the point. And a few days later, in my little part of town, we had a bad flood. And everyone showed up to my door, something that would not have happened before, because I expressed a sense of solidarity with them. I understand the particular social fabric of my town, which is distinct from Cortona and Tuscany for a number of reasons. I live in another region. And for that reason, they see that I respect it, but it's taken more than 20 years for them to understand that. So, Italy for me has been my love, my muse, my teacher, above all. And I, a part of what I want to discuss today is the fact what Italy still has to teach. You've been talking about how Italy has to adapt, has to become like others. I frankly don't agree. Um, Rome should look as it did because I believe that before the advent of the automobile, it was unquestionably the most beautiful city in the world. But what has happened, and I, I'm not against modernity because Italians have been great modernizers, but Rome had social fabric. It had shops, neighborhoods, people who lived there, who could afford to live in their neighborhoods, and local purveyors who provided for them, whether bread, services, whatever. Um, my last extended visit to Rome was to write an article and to work at, at the opera was a little more than a year ago, December of 2012. And I noticed in the area I stayed in, all the shopkeepers were gone and replaced by French chains, by German chains. It's, this is not modernity. This is the incursion of global marketing and reducing the level of the quality of life of Italy for Italians. And what I've been seeing, and what I regret deeply, is that I'm not Italian in my background, but I can recognize that it's a nation that still has more to teach us than most other nations. If we are open to it, and if Italians are confident in their native skills and abilities. But rather, what we're seeing is the Europeanization of Italy. I'll give but one example. Before the European Union in Brussels and Strasbourg created food standards, the average food standards in Italy for cleanliness, for quality, were much higher than anywhere else in the European Union. When Italy had to adapt to the standards of the European Union, they actually outlawed certain foods that had not killed anyone in 500 years, <laughs> basically since Lucretia Borgia was the last time people died eating food intentionally in Italy. But because the quality is so high, the people historically have been closer to the land. They know the rhythms. They know when to plant. They know when to bring the animals uphill, when to bring the animals downhill. What hour of the day to milk? when they should eat grass, when they should eat hay, all of that is native knowledge. And that's just the food culture, but I can take that all across the spectrum to all of human creativity. And what we're seeing is an impoverishment of that. And I, I simply think that by making Italy conform, rather than making Italy more confident in itself and its skills, that we are damaging Italy. It's not the buildings, it's what's in the buildings that's changing. It's the people, it's the stores, it's the 
banalization of taste that we're seeing everywhere. It is the fact that there, it was a very regional country with a magnificent food and linguistic heritage, and now it's being standardized. Now, Milan might have sushi, and I, I lived in Milan for two years. I worked there before moving where I live now. I love Milano. It's a big international city. But Italy is known as the nation of the Cento Città, the 100 cities that are historical, unique, former duchies, former republics, that even since the unification of Italy by 1870, have maintained their character. Now, I'm not saying that all of the damage came from outside of Italy. There was plenty to blame within. Italy, in the years I've lived there, has had about 30 governments. Uh, left, right, center. The most damaging by far was Silvio Berlusconi for the simple reason he was in longer than anywhere else. And because of his business interest, he imported the worst of American television, the worst of food from elsewhere, and tried to make Italy a fast food, cheap, cash and carry, use and, and throw away nation. It's a nation that has a heritage of quality. And that was undone in recent years. And it's not gone, but it has to be relearned, taught back to Italians. And I think that the future of Italy, and I'll get into it after, is that Italy again will be what I call la nazione di mestieri, the nation of crafts, that every Italian will reclaim abilities that they don't think are important, but that in fact are essential and be masters of them and be able to teach them to people elsewhere, which is why we love Italy. I, I think this is very interesting. I mean, um, what 